Hello there, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Equestrian War on patch 1.8.2.1. That's a lot of points in there, but today we are beginning as a nation that was selected or recommended from my Discord server when I ran a poll in September 2020, and Lake City in Equestrian War was chosen, and which we will hopefully reform or turn into the Holy... Roman Empire, I think? I think that's the way we're doing it. Regardless custom game rules, we're going to leave historical AI focuses off. Just to see what happens. So, I don't want to know what's going to happen. So, let's just start, begin. So, we're using five mods, I, I think. Equestrian War. Uh, let's see. Stage Hunter Tool Mod. Colored Buttons, Colored Events. And the Player of the Peace Conferences Mod, which is a great one. If you want to read about Lake City, go right ahead in 1007. Uh, we, have a lot, we have a lot of reading to do anyway, so I'm not going to read all this. Uh, there's a next section if you would like to read about it. And let's see. I'm not exactly sure. I know a lot of these nations in Equestria War are based off real, you know, our world nations. I'm not really sure who Lake City is based off of with the capital of Jezeragrad. Uh, I don't know. But regardless, we can't do too many focuses. We got. We want to go down the princely restoration path. But to begin, we can do Dreams of a Federation. That does give us 125 political power, which is kind of nice. Uh, modernize the army. I might go with modernize the army first. You know, technically, there's not really much we can do down here. It gives you a lot of blueprints, which is okay. You can get this guy as an advisor, the 200 battalion plan. But this, except for this middle path, gives you more heart attack and soft attack, attack for infantry equipment. Other than that, this is literally just all blueprints. So, you know what? I want to get some political power. Dreams of a federation. The tr Treaty of Coldstream was designed in such a way that the coalition members could choose to expand the treaty to certain policy areas. It is a far cry from true political unity, but by breaking open discussion about expanding the treaty, we might be able to set up or set a step in the direction of a true river federation. And there's nothing to the right side of there. We have three research slots, and we have polling technologies, which I do not want to forget about, which are supposed to be very important. But we'll go with the tried and true. Normal hoy for opening starter type of deal stuff here. Cool. And we're going to grab some construction speed because I love construction speed. Next up, we got 51,000 manpower. Uh, let's say this area is the only place. Actually, these two areas are pretty good for infrastructure. You go low, you go high. On Hooves Division, 12 combat width with engineers as well as an, uh, artillery, which is not bad. Uh, light divisions, garrison divisions. What do you have for this? Eh, that's not great. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Okay, let us begin, my friends. Because there's not much else we can do. We have seven divisions, including one Pegasi division and an ill-timed invitation. Mir Foot, or Frost, looked out of his window overlooking Jezergrad. He sighed. The city looked ever so peaceful, and yet so much was brewing in those cheerful streets. He turned back towards his desk, where the letter was resting. The invitation to the summit in Coldstream. He'd been dreading it. The timing of it all had just been so poor between the elections, the chaos and longsword, and the unrest. He feared that leaving for Coldstream would be like leaving the Fire Pony Station in the middle of a drought. And yet, despite it all, the coalition was a vital pillar of the city's stability and democracy. If it, it wasn't there, what would even stand in the way of the military taking over? I can ill afford to leave. My staff can hold their... Hold down the fort for a few days. Well, we'll see. Field Marshal, Lake Shield. Eh. Cold Dew. River Sword. Uh, I like River Sword because they have a lot more benefits here. But Cold Dew's got, got it going on, so we'll choose Cold Dew. Does this person have a biography? Does not. That's okay. Uh, infantry. Wild Tree. Ah, oh, Wild Tree. Uh, General Wild Tree hopefully has some sort of thing that we can talk about. Oh, wait. Tito Titovich. Hmm, oh, what is this? Renewed Mark's Pony. Okay, not bad. I kind of like that one. Yeah, more attack and defense for infantry. Uh, I'm tempted, but let's go with Tito Titovich. I like that blue hair. I love blue. Cool. And then... Ooh, out of sight. Springtime Frost, Mayor of Lake City. Let it a weary sigh as his boat pulled into the dock. He may have been a fisher once, but those days were long behind him, and the rocking of the boat did his stomach ill. As he stepped down onto the landing, he felt his gut twist at the thought of the days to come. He couldn't afford to wait idly here. His rivals would mock him for running from the mess back home. On the other hoof, if he stayed home, he would have abandoned Lake City's allies and economical partners, drowning in the sea of stress and worries. He barely acknowledged River Swirl as she welcomed him to the summit location, yet at the last minute, he snapped out of his melancholy, apologized, and embraced her. Chancellor Swirl, how good it is to see you. He didn't add anything and simply left for his accommodations with Swirl, looking at him with concern as her aides announced that His Majesty of Deponia was arriving, preventing her from taking or talking to her, but not out of mind. 
Uh, let's see. You know what? Reconnaissance. Let's get some recon. Sunrise Sky with a scar through her eye. The election of 1007. It's an election year in Lake City, and this year promises to be one of the most vicious in recent years. With Grand Mayor Springtime's Frost's unwillingness to seek re-election, two ponies have come to the forefront of the campaign, Wavebreaker and Westerly Leeward. Wavebreaker is seen as a more traditional candidate with a policy that favors greater cooperation with the River Coalition and increased social spending to alleviate the poverty of the city. This platform has garnered him the support of the, both the moderate Constitutional Democratic Party and the left-leaning Social Democratic Party. Westwardly Westerly Leeward, on the other hoof, is seen as a more extremist candidate. Ooh. He calls for increased military spending and a greater role for the military within the affairs of the state. While these beliefs are radical, he appears or is able to easily tap into the rampart anti-Griffin sentiments of Lake City playing upon the lingering phobias of its ponies. His party, the Republican Vanguardists, also operate a paramilitary wing, allowing him to intimidate his opposition. Lastly, there are whispers from within the military, which state that there are certain officers who wish to return Lake City to its monarchist roots. While these radicals would be discredited as a tiny minority, it cannot be ignored that within recent months, the pretender, Grand Prince Heavenly Snow, has been unaccounted for by our intelligence agencies. Let's hope it goes smoothly and together at last. The delegates at the Colt Stream Summit had all arrived in time and were welcomed by Chancellor River Swirl, Mayor Springtime Frost from Lake City, King Grimhoof of Deponia, President Water Lily of the Bakaran Republic, King Rover Diamond Shield of the Diamond Mountain, specially accompanied by his daughter, Princess Molly, uh, Queen White Star Vitten Lamb, Sotagos Pegacles of Nimbusia, and finally Taoish Crimson Nick Hart of the Ponyad clans. A lavish state dinner was thrown at the old castle of Coldstream and co-hosted by Chancellor River Swirl and the Coalition General Reporter. From all accounts, it was a joyous occasion with a few toasts be being thrown. The evening continued with a traditional ball, though not all the leaders attended. Stratagos Pegacles, who had already barely partaken at the state dinner, went to bed early while King Rover Diamond Shield went back to his apartments but was represented by his daughter Molly. The ball, attended by many honored citizens from all the coalition, opened with what could have been a diplomatic faux pas. The opening dance that was supposed to feature leaders dancing in duos left Water Lily hanging due to the early departure of Pegacles. Yet Princess Molly spontaneously offered the Bakaran president to dance with her and King Grimm. Hoof. Though awkward, the dance endeared the crowd and the fashion journalist in attendance. More gloom was Mayor Frost, who had seen dancing at the end of the ball, which with Chancellor Shrule after having spent the majority of the evening up riding in an alcove. Finally, the night ended on a demonstration of Anamtaina techniques by Crimson Nick Hart and her entourage at the request of Princess Molly, drawing many cheers before all leaders finally went to bed to get some much needed rest before the various meetings of the summit. The Diamond Princess was a revelation of the night. Ugh. Dancing Queen. I guess Dancing Princess. Very cool. Oh, Wavebreaker gives a speech. In front of a massive crowd outside of Jezra Grat's largest theater, Wavebreaker gives another of his pre-election speeches. His platform is twofold. First, he will seek greater security against the Griffin Empire through deeper cooperation amongst the members of the River Coalition. Second, he demands the creation of a generous welfare or social welfare system which will protect the citizens of Lake City from poverty, ill health, and unemployment. While his speech is seen as lackluster, pollsters believe that Wavebreaker's election is assured with his backing from both the SPD and the CDP. United We Are Strong is Social Democratic Party, CDP, not CDU. This is this isn't Germany, isn't it? It might be. I don't know. Springtime's heart. Springtime Frost moaned meekly as he nursed a cup of herbal tea. His late night writing letters took home took its toll on him in the form of a migraine. It was time for this risk to come here to pay off, but how? If he went home with nothing but a story about one dance to show, his political rivals would have his head. He went in the plenary session confident. He finished off the Vitalandic offers that would have jeopardized the guild's support and secured a lower tariff for an investment deal with Deponia. He followed the various speeches, reviewing his own address, carefully writing to say nothing and upset no one. The perfect milk toast speech. And then came his time to speak. He stood up, considered the audience, and after taking a long breath, threw his notes to the side. Dear friends, allow me to thank you all for coming today. It is a simple thing, really, but how many of our ancestors could have conceived us meeting peacefully when 200 years ago we still fought over this very city? I see some grimacing, but still, is it not a testament to how far we've come? How democracy and the rule of law changed us? How collaborating on the simplest of things brought us closer together? Yet, this great con concord of ours was born in pain in a painful world we must continue living in. Just a few days west of my home city, ponies are being slaughtered in the name of purity. South Prywen burns as leaders failed to give their citizens a place or bread on their tables. And what of our great enemy? What of the empire? Perhaps goodwill will triumph in a troubled place. Perhaps the frontier shall become a place of meeting rather than fighting. But we're not there, and it is likely that the worst voices get heard in Griffenheim, like they have not before. Whatever comes, we shall honor the spirit of Coldstream Treaty and face it together, as friends in peace and harmony. For if democracy fails, if the coalition fails, if we fail, then what but dearth and misery for death to come, or death and misery to, for decades to come. Perhaps when we meet again, we will have the occasion to deepen our bonds. It is my dearest hope and wish. 
thank you all. Cool, how much political power do we get? 0.67 a day. Oh, and the Unlikely Coalition. Oh. The summit consists of a flurry of meetings, many of which allow for bilateral deals to be made. However, there was one main event, the plenary meeting from which conclusions would be drafted the summit's final declaration. Each spoke. River swirl as this year's host opened with a cheerful, if timid speech. Stratagos Pegacles opened next, putting the meeting in a foul mood with a strict interpretation of the treaty and his defense of helotry against perceived criticism. King Grimhoof, followed by trying to appease and reorient the discussion towards the issues of the West and the slaughter and longsword. President Wider Lily pounced on this and spoke of moral leadership and the need to prevent such atrocities. Queen Weister also condemned longsword but focused on Griffinian raids and remained uncontroversial. Taoisha Crimson Nick Hart advised a Advise a closer look to the South and the crimes committed in Osterland and Barad, as well as the controversial ideas of a detente with the militant nation of Kassa. Okay, so. King Robert Damashur openly lambasted slights against his kingdom and criticism of the continued use of slavery, requiring of his allies to instead focus on their military spending. With only the quiet mayor, Springtime Frost, remaining to speak, it felt as if the summit would end on a bad note, and yet the quiet mayor instead gave a passionate speech about his pain regarding the atrocities committed west and south, the importance and beauty of democracy, and his desire to see the coalition form closer ties. This final speech caused a pause among the attendees, and then a small applause despite King Robert's disapproval. It was, after all, a rare moment, one of the agreement between the de facto leader of the status quo and the most militant nation of the coalition. Now it was for... Now it was on for the coalition general reporter to draft the final declaration. Let's go and read it to the press. And let us... Westerly speaks out against Griffonian, uh, Griffin aggressions. Today, Westerly... Uh, leader, word, leader of the Republican vanguard, held a speech in... Pristinae. This sediment lies mere kilometers from the border with the country of long swords and has for generations been a prime location for Griffin bandits looking to gain wealth and prestige through plunder. In a speech, she played into these heavily anti-Griffin sediments, promising the denizens of the city safety through increased military spending and greater border security. The speech was well received with a quarter of the city's population attending the rally. Pollsters put the province of Kosovo firmly in Leeward's camp, although he still has much ground to gain on Waybreaker. We'll stop those Griffins. Uh, just again. Is this... Uh, is this Belgrade? Is, wait, is it Belgrade? I don't know. I really have no idea. Return to the chaos though. For a springtime frost, the return home was a quiet and somber affair. His speech had not pleased many with its departure of his traditional status quo politics, and the old god was outraged by his endorsement of democracy and closer integration with the coalition. Yet, for perhaps the first time in his political career, he felt that he had done what he could have, should have done rather than what was prudent and expected of him. Per the recommendations from the OHS, his return was not announced, nor a large welcome arranged. There were many militant radicals to ensure his safety, and so it was just past midnight when the hooves hit the desk, and the only ponies present were his family and staff, but despite all this, he smiled. There really was no place like home. And like before that event popped up, I want to go through the National Spirit. So we have Defenders of the East, which looks pretty good. We have Guilds, which eh, kind of hurts us. I kind of don't like that one. I want to get rid of that. Rising Militarism, which really doesn't look very good for us. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's see, Treaty of Cold Stream member, of course, we are a faction. And then we have ne negligible Ill illiteracy, lose construction speed and research speed. And then we have low poverty, which is not great, but you know what? At least it's low. And led by Frost for now. He's no biography, but whatever. The February 4th incident. At dawn, Jezzer Agrab was awoken to a large movement of several army regiments into the center of the city. These units quickly seized control of several key sections of the city, including the parliament, the mayor's office, the wartime, or the war ministry, and the offices of the UDBA. The mayor was awoken to the sound of gunfire as troops stormed his residence. He was quickly ushered to a hiding spot prepared for just an emergency. After all, this was far from the first assassination attempt on his mayor. On the mayor, Springtime Frost himself came to power after his predecessor was shot in his own bed by members of the army in a failed coup. Within hours, the city was under rebel control, and their leader, General Wildtree, appeared on the national radio declaring that the democratic system of Lake City had been weakened, or had weakened the nation, and that through his guidance he would restore national harmony and pride. He also promised a restoration of the monarchy, with one heavenly snow having been chosen as a new grand prince. The capital may be lost, but there's a large faction in the military that opposes Wild Tooth's actions. Are ready? Are they? Are ready to move? Movie. Hold on. I'm sorry. Let me reread that sentence. The capital may be lost, but there is a large faction in the military that opposes Wild Tree's actions, uh, in which they are ready to move in order to restore order. That sentence is really weird. Ready to movie? Hmm. Alternatively, Westerly Leeward's vanguards are easier to fight against their political rivals and to protect the Republic. So, secure the mayor and surround the rebels. Unlock the democracy path. We can send in the vanguard and we'll stop them, which restore, which gives you the vanguard restores order, focus, or path. And there's little we can do, and which is what we have to do. The coup seats is taking power. He's still here. And I still want to get the Dreams of Federation. I'm not sure, should we, should we focus on Dreams of Federation? Because we do want to focus very hard 
on the left path here, but Return of the Prince. Springtime Frost was found in his home and assassinated alongside his ide I identical cousin. Oh my goodness. Many other members of the government were quickly found and executed, including Wild Tree's political rival Westerly Leeward. With the civilian government cr effectively crippled, the Lake City Army is faced with a crisis. As an organization, they've always been independent of governmental control, which has put their loyalty into question. These fears were confirmed as units neutral to the crisis began joining the Restoration Faction. By nightfall, only a few stubborn battalions continued to hold out in the name of democracy, though they would not last long against the overwhelming might of the Restoration forces. By morning, all was calm in Jezrograd, as an assembly was gathered outside the Fort Hoof Hoofbolka. The former keep of the old Lake City royal family, Wild Tree proclaimed that he represented the legacy of the Grand Prince Blessed Sword and said that he'd be assuming the duties of regent during a transitional period until the full restoration of the monarchy in his declaration. He stated that the Grand Principality of Lake City was officially restored and that the traitors in the civilian government executed. So ends democracy and begins potentially the princely restoration. And purges will take place. Coup in Lake City. This is how democracy dies with thunderous applause. Thunderous applause. Oh, that sounds like fun. Anyways, uh, just in case, I'm going to put my guys around here. My, uh, what? Ponies. Ponies. Yeah, we hmm. Hmm. I really don't know what faction we are. Let's see, what are we making, actually? I didn't, I don't think we actually looked at this yet. We've been reading a lot, actually, so New Maryland Seeks Patriation. Okay, well, good luck with that. We'll do, let's get up to five, and then two for that, and then two for artillery. We are, we have, like, no resources, quite literally, except a little bit of steel. That is not cool. Military training. Oh, look at this. Improvement industry. Ooh. The Emperor is dead. Oh, good. Dreams of the Federation. We could do this for more army XP. We could do that, but nah. Not right now. G Princely restoration. In 752, Grand Prince Frail Spear was deposed after the Griffonian Empire destroyed our great city. What followed was an era of feeble democratic rule, where the ponies of Lake City carried from one crisis to the next. Thankfully, recent events have seen have seen these wrongs corrected, and the reins of power returned to Lake City's rightful sovereign, Grand Prince Heavenly Snow. We Lake Shield stops being uh, Field Marshal, Bright Star stops being a general, as well as Starwalt, Reign of Terror for quite a while. Nice. Nice. Oh, look at all that political power we got. Let's see, we can, we used to, ooh, modify outdated industrial sector. We actually get more, or farmer modernization, more max factories in a state. I want to get, ooh, that looks not bad. At the same time, though, we get point one, or point, pretty much point eleven a day. I do want to get a silent work pony. Hmm. Silent work pony. People don't like uh, back in the day, and probably some people still nowadays don't like it if I spend political power on that stuff. Uh, this doesn't give you any more political power. I'm gonna go with the silent work pony for now, unless there's something wrong with this person. Uh, no, water dew looks like it's gonna be here for a while, so we'll choose that, which we more than triple the amount of political power we get right now. And since we do it early, we'll definitely get the cost of selecting Waterdew by the time we end this campaign, which will be worth it. It's in my mind. So then the next one we'll do... Oh, Vico Lin becomes Prime Minister. Interesting. We'll definitely do Grant Land to the Guilds, which is fine. Oh, my... Majocracy. Cool. But, oh, they're having a little... Oh, a little tussle down there. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, this continent... This is... I think this is Equus, right? I don't forget what this one is called. This continent. Oh, what's going on over there? Ooh. A little bit of a conflict led by Mr. Beard, and then led by Split Hair, Shine Spark. Cool, cool, cool. So I'll be honest. Okay, so we gotta talk about this. Wild Trees Regen Regency, which you get. Uh, let's see. Heavenly Snow may hold the strongest claim to the throne of Lake City. However, he has so much to learn before he is truly capable of assuming the duties of office. Until such a time, Wild Tree will continue to act as regent, handling the affairs of the state. Until Heavenly Snow feels fully capable of taking responsibility, which doesn't look too bad. I like that daily compliance. It's not much, but you do get some political power, or long live the prince. While members of the Grand Prince's Privy Council privately question his qualifications, Heavenly Snow assures his ministers that he's fully capable of handling the affairs of state on his own. This is a bit of a shocking revelation. Uh... Considering that the prince's initial reluctance to the coup, however, none will openly criticize such a decision, which you lose political power, daily political power costs, less stability, and less research speed until he... Be until the focus is complete, in which you do get more political power, stability, and war support, and a little bit more political power. Ooh, that's pretty tough. That's 140 days versus 70, but Lake Festival. Every year, ponies from across Lake City come together in Jezrograd for the an city's annual Lake Festival. The festival originally dates back to the reign of Blessed Sword, who used the occasion to, uh, as a chance to shore up the unification of the various tribes around Jezrograd. 
Throughout the lake's first Lake City Principality, this holiday was celebrated with a week of parades, banquets, tournaments, and ended with a massive boat race around Jezegret Harbor. The winner, or the winner of this race, would then become quite the celebrity and be granted a private audience with the reigning monarch. After the fall of the monarchy, the holiday continued to be celebrated annually in much of the same way. The one noticeable difference is that the winner of the boat race would receive an audience with the Grand Mayor, a key to the city of Jezegret, and a generous prize of gold and other treasures. In the last 50 years, however, the festival has been in steady decline as the city of Jezegret has been struggling to find to opulent festivities, which once marks once marked the occasion, the week is now a weekend. The banquets reduce in grandeur. The parades now mostly made up of military formations, and the boat race only attracts a few diehard participants. It greatly increases the morale of our nation if we were to provide this event with proper funding, financing a week of festivities which could rival those of Blessed Sword's reign. Um, you know what? Let's earmark some funding. So be it. If we lose some consumer guys, a little bit of political power, that's okay. And princely federation. So here, I really want. Uh, the dude, Grand Prince's Heavenly Snow. I want Heavenly Snow. I like that political power. It's not much at all. But then again, if you come over here, you do get Prince Heavenly Snow, popular figure. You get more stability as well. You get 150 political power right off the bat. And you get more daily compliance, which honestly is almost not, it's really not much. It's really not much. But at the same time, I don't want to hurt ourselves with this. And it doesn't matter which one we choose because we get both. I don't know if this is going to play into something longer, but I think. It's better if we do Wild Tree, because I don't want to have any debuffs, no matter how short they may be. And I want to get that extra political power for now. So we'll go with Wild Trees. Let me know in the, in the comments below. What do you think is better? Wild Tree immediately or serve as a regent? Or is it better to immediately just go with Heavenly Sword? What do you think? Just because he does get his air, but we might still get that, that his little advisory bonuses there once he gets old enough. Now, that doesn't mean that we technically lose the national spirit of Prince Heavenly Snow, but we probably will. We might, we might not. I don't know. But what do you think is better? Because I don't have a ton of experience here in uh, Equestriate War, but I'm open to learning more about it. Occasionally. This is obviously... Equestriate War is not the main mod focused on my channel. Oh, Wow, look at this. That is not good for you guys. But anyways, oh, we could grand here. Two million ponies, wow, entered the city of Jezergrad this week, coming from all corners of Lake City and the River Coalition, attracted by what promised to be the grandest lake fest festival in a lifetime. A pier had been constructed on the waterfront, with an equestrian-styled theme park built upon it. The rides which most foals had never over only heard rumors of had been imported from Mainheim, Manhattan, and Canterlot, and were open for public use. It was reported that the line for the Ferris wheel got so long that ponies were spending upwards of four hours in the queues, yet not even this dampened the spirits of the families who came to witness this. Every night was marked by banquets, with millions of tons of grains, fruit, ales, salt, and other food products pouring into the city in preparation. The weekend festivals, or feasts, featured fruits from all across the globe, including Griff King Rye, Zebra King Coffee and Chocolate, and peppers from the jungle of Southern Equestria. The Friday parade lasted six hours and included military units which were flowered or showed, showered in flowers and cheers. Floats sponsored by Lake City's Guild celebrating their technological innovation and products and exhibits from all manner of organizations and foreign sponsors. One memorable float was that of New Maryland, which had an intricate mural of flowers planted upon it which showed the cooperation between our two nations. Lastly, there was a boat race. Held on Saturday evening last year, this race included 30 ships. This year, registration had to be stopped at 300 until pressure called for a second and later third race to be created. The winners of each of these three races will then go be entered into a three-way tiebreaker overall. The tournament was won by the blue nose in a photo finish. As Sunday rolled around, the train station roads and waters leading out of Jezergrad were clogged with ponies attempting to exit the city. The festival had been a success, greatly contributing to national morale and the perception of a republic to outside nations. How will they ever top this? No idea. Hopefully they won't. We can be number one. And let's see. Risk of losing of another country assuming leadership of a ro rover coalition. Oh. Diamond Mountain. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Summer Sun Celebration, good for them. And I wanted to grant land to the guilds, even though it'd be probably a good idea to get to uh, early mobilization or partial mobilization even more quickly, but... Oh, we actually do get benefits to research speed, just slight bits, but I, I, it's just better to get partial mobilization, even though you you still get more fuel gain per oil, which is very nice. Point. Hey, look at that, 0.71. Nice. Even though we have only 2% stability. Oh my goodness, that's not good. Yeah, we've got plenty of artillery, though. 1007 Riverland stuff. Coalition or Hoofball Cup. The Kaib coming to join the Griffin Liberation Army. Oh, God. Well, Who is down here? What is going on? This, we got a Smoker Starry Night. We've got a lot of hair. Rosewood under Hockmeisterin Kondra Wavewing versus 
Khan Palas Dusk ta Talon. They look like a pelican. Pelican? Pelican. Military budget support. Subjugate the guilds. You know what? Should, should I do this? Should I do, do Dreams of a Federation? I mean, I like I would like to do it, maybe, but... It seems like, with the way we're going, honestly, we could go down that way. But, we're going to end up here. A pony on the Griffin throne, so maybe it's not super important to do that. Let me know in the comments. Should I focus on Dreams of a Federation stuff at all? I don't think I really should. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it really helps us. It gives us more points, but... For now, we're going to focus on the left path. Demand Deponian loyalty. Ooh, actually, where's Deponia? Who is that? Oh, they're right north of us. Oh, King Grimhoof. Uh, you know what? We're going to do that immediately because he only has three divisions and we have seven, so... Deponia has always been close to Lake City. They may be backwards in their ways, but they are close friends and trading partners. What with a little political pressure, we can secure them under our watchful eyes. And like I said earlier, actually, we have... No other race, we're ponies. Uh, outdated industrial sector. Industrializing society might not be... It's not better. It's actually going down as worse. We'll go with a modern society. And we have a small science base. We need to get a substantial science base. Which actually gives us more political power. Interesting. Hmm. For our modernization. We're going to go with grant land to the guilds for four more factories. We lose two factories for 185 days. But we get more resource efficiency, gain output of all kinds, speed, and construction. Beautiful. And we have zero. Oh, there goes those people. Civil War in Olenia. Okay. Cool. The Grand Galloping Gala. And we still have 0.76 a day. Nice. In which I'll... Oh, is there anyone else here we want? Elusive Gentleman. That's always good. 5% more political power really isn't worth it. 15% uh, is so much better. Captain of Industries, who we'll probably choose eventually. Dispersed industri Industry, because we love it. At least I like it. Uh, anything else? We might want a Theorist eventually, too. Naval Experience game, which is okay. Fire Flash. Not Flash Fire, that's a Pokemon set, but Fire Flash. New Daring Do Book. Uh, gotta check that one out. Gotta, gotta, gotta. Rada, rada, rada. Cool. Broadfeld was annexed, the Kingdom of Was. Cool. Hmm. Oh. Oh, that. Oh, now it's. Is it the Smoker? No, it's Miss. I got too much air. The River Republic declared one of the Socialist River Republic versus the Smoker. Yeah, the Smoker's still here. Cool. What's going on over here? Oh, you're tearing yourself apart. What type of flag is that? Caramel haze with a little ch stubble. Oh, chin stubble. Oh, versus Hector Lipizan. Wow. Communist versus non-aligned. Eradicate unemployment. Oh, they have their own unique focus tree, maybe too. Oh, uh, yeah, they do. Socialist River Republic. Eradicate unemployment. Establish military commissariats. Defense industry complex. Mass industrialization. Broadfeld. What is going on in the world? It's a very violent world we live in. Very violent. If we, were, we, could, eh, we could do that one. That could give us more stupidity, which is actually very nice. Uh, screw it. We'll do, we're going to do that first, just because I want more stability. 13% is not good, and that actually hurts our political power gain. Deponia folds. At dawn, an envoy entered the court of King Grimhoof on behalf of Grand Prince Heavenly Snow. These diplomats showed little restraint in their dialogue or, and claimed to have only a single demand for the king. The quest was that King, king Grimhoof pledged allegiance to Grand Prince Heavenly Snow as set out in the treaty assigned nearly 150 years ago by the predecessors. The king is seeing his hopelessness in the face of Lake City's superior army, folded at the request and formally submitted, promising us troops, tribute, and loyalty in future endeavors. Excellent. Good, and we should, uh, it's a little earlier, so, ooh, we could lower their stuff. We could help them out. Let's see, we could help them out. I do want that extra research slot, but is there a way for us to get a research slot faster? So we go one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, Cult of the Prince, ooh. Ooh! Just from the effects, what do you guys think? Would it be better for us to do Prince of the People versus Cult of the Prince? Would you get... More political power, stability anyways, war support, and daily supremacy support, and you can get a, a Prince of Terror advisor. That seems kind of cool. And then, not founded the Liberal Federation, fully independent. What do you think is better as well? Reaffirm the treaty, get political power. Actually, no, actually it doesn't even matter. What do you... Because we can't go down this way. No, it requires one of the following. Actually, no, we can't go this way. Reaffirm the treaty or Blessed Swords Legacy. Because we leave the rubber union if we go down this path. But we still gotta do anti-Griffin propaganda as well, which requires either one of those two, so it doesn't even matter. 
So I want to know your opinions about both of these selections. But we're going to end today's episode a little earlier than normal with princely charity because low poverty with mild poverty. We can make great strides in bridging the gap between our new regime and the common citizen with a sacrifice of a small portion of the prince's personal wealth towards the charity project. Who knows? These may have even help alleviate the crushing poverty of Lake City. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed today's first episode in which we're playing as Lake City or Princely Lake City. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new to my channel. Uh, check out my Discord link in the description below, which I run monthly polls on. And I will see you tomorrow as we shall make our steps into assuming eventually a holy Roman Empire. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.